Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Seward's Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. At the end of the video, there's also a link where you can learn more about my YouTube videos, self-paced online courses, and live online classes and workshops. This is a narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Flower Pot. The photograph on the right was the reference that I used for this painting, and on the left is my interpretation. These are the colors that I used to accomplish this painting. Sap green, royal blue, cerulean blue, pyro red, quinacridone coral, rose matter quinacridone, quinacridone gold, quinacridone burnt orange, hands of yellow, and mauve. The painting itself is done on 11 by 15 sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. My paper is mounted to a piece of gator board with masking tape. I mount it dry and I keep my board at about a 20 degree angle when I paint. When I'm going to begin a painting, I like to set up my palette with a variety of colors that I think I'll need in the areas that I'll be working. So if you look in the, the palette in the lower right hand corner, you'll see that I'm mixing uh, a variety of tones here. There's some greens and some golds. Uh, I'm using quinacridone and gold and hands of yellow and some sap green. And I just mix pools of paint on my palette so that they're easy uh, and timely uh, to, to have available uh, when I need them. So these are mixtures with sap green, royal blue, pyro red, quinacridone and gold, hands of yellow. Uh, so there's some warm and there's some cool tones there. And now I'm going to just start to put in a wash. I mean working with a quill brush and I'm putting water down around some of these flower shapes. I've drawn my sketch with a, a B pencil lightly so it's, it, it's hard to see on this um, video a little bit. But I'm working in some of the green tones. I'm going around the flowers. I don't want to uh, create just an outline. I'm not just going to um, do a, a complete 360 degree uh, coverage on, on the, the edge of that flower. You can see I have plenty of water uh, in, in my brush and I come back with water to, to gradate the edges and soften the edges. This is not going to be an attempt to paint every leaf that's in a photograph. It's not an attempt to, to copy a photograph. It's an interpretation of that subject that happens to be in that photograph. And you'll see I'm using warm and cool colors as I apply my greens. Some of the greens are cooler and some of the greens are warmer. I'm just working around my uh, composition here and this will just start to develop so I'm working in negative space at the moment I put this down and uh, I like to soften it with a fine mist spray so I'm taking the spray and I blot it to pick up any excess moisture here I continue with this wash working wet on dry as I start in an area then once I've applied the paint I might come back in and add some color in which case I'll be working wet on wet because of the, the previous application of paint that hasn't dried. So I'm continuing to bring it across here and I want to soften these edges, I'm going to use my spray bottle and uh, soften these just a little bit. And I'm going to let that paint run. You always want to make sure if there's any excess around it, you get it picked up so it doesn't go into an area that you don't want. So this process continues across the page. I'm not trying to, 
to to render the, the leaves and the and the flowers and everything each individually. I'm just describing the edges and working uh, in negative space off the exterior edge of some of these flower shapes, some of the leaf shapes. As I bring this wash across, I want to start to bring in some cooler tones. If you look in the, the reference, the subject, you'll see that the, the actual leaves and, that are on the, uh, the flower pot itself are a little uh, brighter, a little warmer. And then in the, in the background there you have uh, some ivy or something that's growing. Uh, on something on a wall or a lattice and it's much cooler green so I'm going to start to introduce that uh, thought here and now I'm using a bigger brush I, I would have used a, a bigger brush on the left side as I was coming across but I wanted to be able to uh, keep some uh, uh, fine tips so I could uh, uh, describe the the, sh the sharp angles as you go into the, to, to the flowers and the, that are that are caused by the petals themselves. With this big, larger brush, I can't really get in between and make a, a, a sharp point going into that flower where the uh, petals intersect. So now I'm using a larger brush, and here you can see I have some cool green, and I'm, I'm letting it kind of run into some of the warmer, kind of a gold green. And this is a light, pretty much a light middle value, maybe a middle to, to light middle value that I have across the page. Now I'm going to bring this wash down and just uh, take it uh, completely off the page here and just cover that whole area. So there's, if you look at the, the reference photo, there's hundreds and hundreds of leaves there. I'm not trying to describe all those. I'm not going to try and render them. I'm just going to put them in there as a kind of a shape with some variation of value and temperature and uh, I'll bring in a little bit of edge later but um, I'm just putting this uh, varied wash across that area. I've thoroughly dried this and I'm taking my spray bottle I'm softening some of the edges that I put down. It, it, it uh, softens it, diffuses the color a little bit, and just gives a kind of a diffused appearance to the overall shapes that are there in the composition. Now I have a mixture on my palette of cerulean blue and Halloween orange. Because they're opposite sides of the color wheel, they're going to start to turn uh, the mixture to a, a kind of a gray neutral. And I'm going to put this uh, on this uh, flower pot just to give it a little bit of color. I'm, I'm not going to try and, and paint it uh, so that it looks like I painted an orange pot. It's going to have some warm tones in it, kind of orangey uh, gray tones, but it's not going to look like a bright orange clay pot. Uh, I'm just going to suggest that that's the type of pot it is. I'm going to give a little bit of that indication with that color, but it's going to be uh, a fairly neutral mixture that I'm going to use on this and uh, there will be uh, s some areas where it will be warm and other areas where it's going to be a cooler mixture and it will have more cerulean blue in it. So right now my paper is wet in this area where I've applied this initial wash I'm going to start to add a little bit more color to it and I'll introduce uh, some of the cooler mixture also. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I apply that with a one inch brush, a one inch flat brush. So now I have a, a quill brush here. I want to be a little bit more precise on where I'm applying this. So because the paper is saturated and my board is tilted, that 
paint starts to flow down and starts to, to gradate into the lot. I like the, I use a, a tissue to blot quite a bit. So now I'm going to take um, some of the cooler mixture here. It has a little more cerulean blue in it. And let that um, gradate along with uh, the paint that's on the paper there. So the paper's still wet. And as I apply this cooler tone, it's going to soften its way into the warmer color. You do have to be careful when the paper starts to get damp. If you come in with too low a uh, brush that's too loaded, it's going to uh, potentially cause backwashes and blossoms. So when when your paper starts to get kind of a damp condition, you need to be aware of of how you add paint to that to that area that's damp. We're going to put some touches of this warm tone up on the rim where the rim of the flower pot would be uh, showing in between some of the leaves. So it's not a solid band that I'm painting of a rim around the top. It's just pieces that you, you see as you're looking through the leaves. Now I have uh, a mixture on my palette with some blues and some a little bit of red in it, some quinacridin uh, rose matter or rose matter quinacridin to give me a kind of a, a violet, a, a gray violet, a gray red violet. And uh, I'm just going to apply uh, this gray mixture to uh, the shadow that's being cast by this pot of flowers. I want this shadow to help describe the, the horizontal and vertical planes that we're dealing with here. There's uh, kind of a step that goes up behind the pot and then it goes flat. So you have the rise and then the run of the step. And this is actually sitting on a circular or a spiral uh, staircase, an element from a spiral staircase that's sitting outside. So the angles are a little different on it, but um, you still have the, the vertical and the horizontal planes. And I want to use these shadows to help try and describe those by contouring uh, the, the shapes and the angles. Now this shadow here, I'm just going to run off the page. These shadows are being cast by the, the leaves and the stems and the flowers themselves. Next, I'm going to give a little color to the center of these uh, flowers. It's, there's kind of small flowers with a cone center. And uh, I'm using quinacridone gold, quinacridone burnt orange, and some quinacridone violet. And I'm just going to describe these with just some uh, shapes of color. I'm going to try and let them run in into one another and so there's some uh, flow of the paint um, mixing on the paper so I put down the, the gold tone then a little bit of quinacridone and violet and I just let the edges of them just just mingle together on the, on the paper. I'm working wet on dry and I'm going to put that in a few of these and I don't want these to be uh, feel like they're targets sitting here 
Uh, I want to describe them with some color and a little value, but I, I don't want to make them like they're bullseyes here. So here you can see I've done a couple of these. And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to uh, put a little texture in um, these that I've done. So I'm going to dry them. And now they're dry. And I'm going to take a, a coarse spray from a little bottle here. Just spritz this. I don't, I don't push down all the way. And these are kind of small targets, but I'm just going to spritz some water on them to get some uh, droplets of water. You can also tap a, a brush with moisture in it on your hand. And I'm going to just kind of strike it a little bit with a tissue to lift off where the droplets were. And it creates just a, a slight texture in these uh, the centers of these flowers. And you can see that I'm just putting a touch of some of that quinacridone and violet in a few spots just to strengthen it a little bit after I did the lifting. I finished the, the center of the rest of the flowers that I'm going to have in this and I, I didn't put as much detail in those. Um, they're, they're not this, the, in the area that I really want to draw all the attention to. And uh, I've dried the paper and now I'm going to start to add some color. And I'm not trying to paint individual petals necessarily. I'm just I'm, I'm giving the suggestion of petals, but I, I want this color to kind of run and, and be loose. And then I'll shore it up a little bit with some brushwork, with some edges, the development of edges. But right now, I just want this color just kind of flow around the flowers and, and drip down the page a little bit. And I also have some touches of quinacridone and gold. I'm going back in where I put some of the yellow town in. I'm just letting that gold, that uh, burnt orange diffuse a little bit into the flowers. I'm continuing the application of these colors with the rest of the flowers. Now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, a red tone. in there with the gold. It's cool. quinacridone and coral I add a little bit to the quinacridone and gold. And just to suggest some petals here. I, I don't, don't get real detailed. That's just not the kind of painting I'm doing with this. I just want to suggest the flowers. I'll put some, some edges, but I won't define all the edges. I'll let some of it just be diffused and let some of those edges get lost. And then I'm just I'm gonna with some brush strokes give the suggestion of some of the direction of those petals. Now I'm adding a little bit more to a couple of these flowers here. I'm painting that with a mostly of a mostly a kind of a oh, an orangey sienna color. So you can see how they're kind of free flowing. They suggest a flower, but they don't fully define it. And now I'm going to dry this. And you'll see that they've dried uh, quite a bit lighter. Now I want to start to define some of the edges uh, where the leaves are. And some of the edges I'm painting are, are the leaves themselves. Some of the other edges I'm painting are where I have uh, the green tone on the negative edge of a shape of a flower or another leaf. So I'm doing both positive and negative painting as I apply the, start to apply some green tones in here. I just do some small shape making. I look for shapes that are created by intersections of other shapes or overlapping of other shapes and then I, then I find ways to explore those with my paint and my paintbrush. I'm taking a bit darker, cooler mixture and I'm touching it to some of the areas where I just applied the lighter green. And that'll uh, create a hard edge on the area that's still dry of the flower and then it, it'll soft, be a soft edge in the areas where it's wet. So that just starts to diffuse that color into the, the first wash that I put down.
I'm starting to put in a larger area of uh, darker green here. So I, I, I want to have some contrast of value, but I want it to uh, the transition to be somewhat soft. I don't want it to just be all hard edge and abrupt. Um, so I'm doing some wet and wet brush work here. I started with the wet on dry, applied a little bit of a wash in there, added some water, and then I started to add more pigment to that while it's still saturated paper. In this mixture, uh, mostly what I'm using is combinations of uh, sap green, pyro red, royal blue, and um, at times I put in some quinacrid and gold. Um, but I use the pyro red, royal blue, and sap green quite frequently in different ratios to give me a, the, the color that I want, either cool, warm, gray. Uh, you can get quite a variety with just a handful of colors. So overall, my painting right now at this stage is still pretty much middle to light value. Now I'm starting to add some that are just a little darker. And these are cooler tones, so they'll tend to recede the way the colors are positioned in this composition. I'm going to start to balance that value and that color a little bit in my composition. So I'm going to come over to the other side of this flower pot, start to introduce some of these cooler and slightly darker green tones. I still haven't gone very dark. So I'm applying this around the edge of the flower and so it, it's I'm working off the negative edge of that negative space but I'm going to turn this wash uh, from the negative painting around that flower into uh, some silhouetted positive leafy shapes. So when I was working against that flower I was working off the exterior edge which I like to refer to as the negative edge and start to describe that flower by painting around it and I've let that wash transition into some leafy shapes that are now overlapping the lighter values behind it. Now I'm going to use uh, my mixture here with some Halloween orange and some cerulean blue. I'm going a little darker though and I'm going to indicate where some of these shadows are on this flower pot. I'm working this mixture around uh, some of the leafy shapes that I had painted. And I'm going to carry uh, this shadow down a little bit on the pot. If you look at the photograph, you can see how those shadows start to, to follow uh, the contour of that uh, uh, planter or flower pot. Now this metal spiral staircase that's here has some perforations in it or some um, areas where it's punched through to help give traction so that they're darker value and uh, as is the support for it there there's some shadowed areas on that I'm not going to get real detailed on this I, I don't want to draw a lot of attention to it and uh, if you look in the photo it's kind of a a rusty red color uh, but I'm, I'm not really going to paint that in I'm going to let it just be white and highlighted uh, with some kind of grayed shadows on it just some gray violets and some blue grays. I want the shadow behind the, the flower pot to be a little darker, so I'm just adding a little darker valued mixture. I'm going to get this small area there that's on this horizontal plane. I'm going to start to paint the, the vertical plane.
So that's just a mixture of a of, of a blue with, with a little bit of red to make a violet and then a touch of uh, a yellow or gold tone in there to gray it down some. Next I'm going to start to uh, define some more edges in the leafy areas of this composition. So that now you can see I have a, a darker value. I'm being a little bit more precise with the application. These are smaller, darker shapes. And this is how I often evolve uh, in my painting process. I start with the larger light shapes, soft edges, bigger brushes, and then I start to work towards more detailed, smaller shapes, darker values, harder edges, and uh, I'm just using the edge to help describe these flowers a little bit. And then um, I try to keep the, the washes that I'm putting down interesting so they themselves look like they're the leaves and the overlaps, uh, overlapping stems and leaves and everything that's going on within the, this flower pot. This part starts to get very repetitive, so as I sometimes do, I'm going to speed this up uh, and continue to talk as you watch these, these uh, little shapes uh, get painted as I, as I glaze around some of these areas and start to bring some of these edges forward. So you can see I'll use a variety of warm and cool colors and um, I use hard edges, I use soft edges, I gradate the values and some of them are hard transitions, hard contrast where I have a hard edge. I don't want to paint every leaf, I just want to give suggestions of the leafy activity and this is how I'm interpreting this subject. You could definitely take an approach where you just want to sit down and render every leaf and uh, petal of a flower, but that's not the style of painting that this is. You can see me periodically I bring in that uh, spray bottle to soften edges, diffuse color. Uh, and I like it as a, uh, it's an effective tool that I can use on my watercolors. So now, a lot of work trying to define edges. I've returned back to normal speed now, and I want to, uh, brighten uh, these flowers up a little bit. So I'm just taking uh, some touches of quinacridone and burnt orange, a little quinacridone and coral, some quinacridone and gold, just add some color to these flowers. some more here and I do have a little bit of Halloween orange in my mixture also. So I'm not painting every petal of every flower. Just just enough to describe what's happening there and enough to draw some attention to this area. I'm adding a, a little bit of this brighter color in some of these other areas to try and balance this across my composition. I don't want it to be isolated in one spot. So uh, just some touches of it, not near as much as what I have on the lower left hand quadrant there. And I'm doing some brush work with uh, a little darker valued mixture. It's kind of a, a cool neutral green. There's some red in it, there's some blue in it. And uh, I, I want to build the contrast in this area here to the left where I'm uh, trying to draw more attention to than the rest of the composition. So I look for these little intersections of shapes. I look for overlaps. I look for edges and I just look for opportunities to place some of these uh, dark values where it makes sense. It, it um, helps provide depth 
the, the, these darker areas tend to, tend to recede and it helps to send other shapes forward uh, where, where I put a, a, a mark and it stops on the edge it helps to find that edge and it also uh, helps starts to find them spatially so the, the darker uh, cool green tone here is moving back and um, the, the shapes that, were, uh, the, that I'm painting off their negative edge starts to move forward. So I just look for these. I'm not looking at my photograph for this. For a lot of this, I don't look for my photograph. I, I just use a photograph to get some ideas. It's a subject that I'm interested in. I'm going to do my own interpretation. Um, I, I look at the overall shape, the volume, and, and some of the, you know, the elements of that for sure. But this brushwork and the where I'm placing these and some of these shapes I'm making are, aren't at all coming from the photograph. They're influenced by it, by the, the motion and the, the activity in it. But I'm not copying every leaf or uh, stem or, or anything. I'm just giving a suggestion of what I'm seeing there. And this is my interpretation. Hopefully you can see as I add these darker values here, and I've I've gone a little darker now. That I start, you start to get a little bit more depth, and there's a little more volume to the to the plant itself. Often when I'm making these kinds of marks, uh, I want to try and suggest overlap, so I'll I'll have a dark shape that looks like it's going under a lighter shape and coming out the other side that that uh, every time I can overlap something that's another way for me to show depth in my painting I want to work a little bit of this off to the to the left hand side here and I, I want to connect some of this darker value to the edge of my painting too often uh, the edge of the painting gets overlooked. It's part of your composition, so you want to connect it to what's going on in your painting. You don't want to feel like your your composition is floating in space in the middle of this rectangle. So here again, I'm going to connect that up at up at the top. It doesn't take much. I'm still not happy with the value of this shadow. I want it to be a bit darker. So I'm going to go over it once again with this kind of a gray-violet. Just going over the area that I already painted. I'm working on dry paper at the moment. Add a little bit more rose matter in there. Try and get a little more red. I just want to have a little bit of a, a darker uh, shadowed area there. I'm going a little darker on the vertical plane here. And I'm going to add just a touch of cerulean blue, I think, just to liven that up a little. It's still very cool, very shadowed, but there's just a little variation of color going on. Just gonna fill that in. I'm gonna bring that forward again. Get that little section where the the pot is blocking the sun. Just a few touches here and there to bring that value over. And, and balance things out a little bit. I'm not putting a lot over here. Just a few touches. Now I'm going to put a white mat on this. And there you have my painting, Flower Pot. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more, about my online videos, my online self-paced courses, 
and live classes and workshops, you can click on the link on the screen for my online learning center.